All right, on page 537 today, we're going to be talking about and working with geometric mean. And the geometric mean Two positive numbers A and B is the number X. such that a over x is equal to x over b so x squared is equal to a times b because as we've been talking about all week x times x if you crisscross multiply this proportion to solve it your x times x would be x squared your a times b would be equal to a b right and then to solve this equation for x you would find the square root of both sides So your x would be equal to the square root of a times b. So the geometric mean of nine and four. Could be equal to the square root of 9 times 4, all right? And the square root of 9 times 4 is the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So if you're asked to find the geometric mean and you get 5 and 45, all right, the geometric mean of 5 and 45 would be the square root of 5 times 45, which would be the square root of 225, and if you have that number in your calculator and you just push the square root button, you'll find that the square root of 225 is a perfect square, and it's equal to 15. If we have to find the geometric mean of 12 and 15, we find the square root of 12 times 15. 
And the square root of 12 times 15 is the square root of 180. And with the 180 sitting on your calculator screen, push the square root button. And we get 14.416. And I'm going to change my calculator now to second fix one. So I round everything one decimal place. And I'm at 13.4. All right, so another way of defining geometric mean is it is the square root of the product of two numbers. All right, the geometric mean of two numbers is the square root of the product of the two numbers. So flip the page, look at the top of page 538. And theorem 8.1 is up there. And this rule is pretty important. And it states that if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, Then the two triangles formed are similar to the original. and to each other. If the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed are similar to the original and to each other. So if we take a right triangle here, we draw a right triangle, Here's our 90 degree angle. We label it ABC. Altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. AB is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So when you draw an altitude, an altitude goes from a vertex to the opposite side, and it intersects it at 90 degrees. So if we draw an altitude to the hypotenuse, it's coming from C, it's going to side AB, which is the hypotenuse, and it's going to intersect it at 90 degrees. That's the definition of an altitude. So we now have three triangles. Okay, and what this rule up here says, this theorem 8.1, is that if this altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed, we just formed triangle ACD and triangle CDB. The two triangles formed are similar to the original. What that means is this triangle on the left and the triangle on the right are similar to the big triangle, the original right triangle, and they're similar to each other, okay? So you're gonna be given this type of picture today 
and then you're going to be asked to write a similarity statement. So if we had to take this diagram and we had to write a similarity statement, The first thing, until you get a little bit better at this, the first thing I'm going to suggest that you do is you extract or redraw the three triangles all rotated, flipped, facing the same direction. So if I start with this smallest triangle and I redraw it here, then I'm going to shrink it down. Here's point B, here's point D, and here's C. Here's my right angle. Everybody agree with that? Good. Now, remember, this right angle here at point D, if it's a right angle on the right-hand side of this altitude, isn't it also a right angle on the left-hand side? All right, they're a linear pair. They have to sum 180. If one of the angles is 90, the other angle is 90. So now I'm going to take this triangle ADC, all right, and I'm going to pull it down here, and I'm going to redraw it. So here's point D again. It's the 90-degree angle, all right? Point A is right here. It stays right here. And then at the top of this altitude is point C. So there's the, there's the two smaller triangles formed inside. Now we got to take this big triangle, the original triangle. In this original triangle, point C had the 90 degree angle at it, didn't it? So let's take this third triangle. It's a little bit bigger. And point C has the 90 degree angle at it. So we're going to redraw it and we're going to label it C. Now we can see from the original triangle that the shorter side is side CB. So point B is right here. And the longer side of the original triangle was point or was side AC. So we're going to make this longer side. AC. So is everybody okay with how we pulled the triangles out and redrew them based on that original picture? If you'll go through that step, it takes a little bit more time, but you won't get the similarity statements wrong. All right? Because look at our similarity statement now. I'm going to take the first triangle. And I'm going to order the letters. I'm going to start with the top. I'm going to start with C. I'm going to go clockwise around the triangle. So we're going to call it triangle C, B, D. And it's similar to triangle. Well, I'm going to stop at the, I'm going to start at the top of the second triangle and I'm going to go clockwise again. All right. So in this triangle, I'm going to go A, C, D. And that triangle is similar to triangle. We're going to start with A again. We're going to go clockwise. So now we're going to go A, B, C. All right. If you need to make a quick check, our right angle is at point D, point D, and point C. So look what we've got as our third letter in our description. We've got a D, a D, and a C. All right. We started every description with this top vertex. So we know those are all congruent. Here's our C, our A, and our A all listed first. So our third letter is going to be correct as well. Everybody okay with that?
All right, so what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be finding the geometric mean of a couple of numbers. And what I want everybody to do is set their calculator to second fix one. Second fix one. That will round everybody's decimal answers one place. And we are going to be listing our geometric mean. as a value rounded one decimal place or to the nearest tenth. So everybody should have this, their decimal rounded the same amount. All right, so your practice for today is going to be on page 541. One through three. And then 8 through 17. 